Hello everybody, welcome back to Freddy Cooks International Soul Food. And we're back with some barbecue ribs. Got some macaroni and cheese. And I got some potato salad back here. I don't know why I got this potato salad. People can't make potato salad for real, but I just thought I'd try it. I got this from Righteous Q in uh, Roswell, Marietta area. Marietta, Georgia. I also got some Texas toast back here if you didn't notice. And the blue stuff. Or is it purple? Mmm. We're going to call it purple, purple juice today. So without further ado, let me say my prayers and we're going to get into it. Lord, thank you for this food I'm about to receive. Let it nourish and strengthen my body for Christ's sake. I ask that you bless and purify this food that it does my body no harm. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. So today we have some more conversation for you. We're going to continue. Our good conversation. But first, let me take a bite of this here. I'll let you have some. I'll let you have some. Take your bite. Go ahead and get it. Don't be greedy. Just get, you know, just get, get a little bit. Okay. Hmm. Pretty good and tender. I have never had this before. I'm still on the search for the best ribs in Georgia. These are pretty good. These are really good. Not quite sure if they're as good as the ribs I had before in the last video. Don't make me call their names right now. Um, but if you're curious, you can go to that video and watch it. Ah, look at that plug. No, these are really, really, really good. But the other ribs that I had, I wanted to call it Loyal Q Barbecue. Loyal Q Barbecue. Loyal Q and Brew. I think that was the name of it. Those ribs had flavor like all through down to the bone, like the smoky flavor, which made them really, really good. But these are good too. Really good. And this sauce is really good. I think I do like this sauce better. This one is a smoky, sweet, and spicy. I like the hint and the sweet with the bite to it. It's good. Mm. And just like always, I could not determine what I wanted to eat today. While I was still working, I had made my food list. I was going to treat myself. And I was going to do, oh my gosh, the ASMR, the, what is it, ASMR video that I did with the Indian food. That food was so delicious. It's hard not to make a mmm sound or say anything, but that food was so good. Indian food is good anyways. I know I'm talking about Indian food while I'm eating ribs, but that's the best life to talk about food while you're eating food. Mm. Y'all may not know it or not, but I'm eating the gristle and all of this. Um, but yeah, Indian food is delicious anyway. So anyone out there who who loves food, I don't know anybody who out there who, well, I'm sure there are some people. If you have not tried Indian food, you have to try it. It's so flavorful. Mmm. So good. And if you don't know what to order and you like rice, you can get 
the chicken biryani. That's something simple and easy. And I'm sure you'd enjoy. I'm not sure how many vegetarians be watching my channel. Probably none. The way I'm tearing these bones up. But the vegetable biryani, mm, that would be a good option. Anyways, I said all of that to say that I was going to get Indian food once again. And you know what? Normally, normally, it has never failed until today. Anytime I get Indian food, I always have to get it the next day as well. Always, always normally end up getting Indian food the next day because it's so good. And I was gonna get it again today. I had rolled out what I was gonna get and everything. And then I had to go to a different side of town. And I was like, well, let me just see what's over here that I want. And for some reason, barbecue, it was. Because it was close. Then I started looking at those pictures. And that's how you choose food, by the way. You have to look at those pictures. Not the manufactured pictures that they put up there on their websites. But look at the customer reviews and pictures. The pictures that people has taken of their own food. If it looks good, it's probably good. If it don't look good, more than likely it's not good. Really, doing that has not stared me wrong. If it looks really good in the picture, normally it's good. If it don't look good, I don't even know if it's good or not because I normally don't eat. If it don't look good in the picture, I ain't going. What for? So like I said, today we will be continuing our discussion on things eternal versus things temporal. Specifically, uh, we're currently talking about love. But let me eat just a little bit more. I also got some desserts to try. I don't even know if I get to that because I'm not a dessert person. Like, I'm not a person to eat dinner and have dessert. Like, when you go out and they say, hey, did you save room for dessert? By that time, I'm already so full, I don't want to see no, no food. No room for dessert. Hmm. This potato salad is not horrible. It just doesn't wake my taste buds up. It would be okay if it had some onion in it. That's what's missing. Some onion and some pepper. Mm. That's so good. Mm. 
Let me taste this mac and cheese. I was going to get the collard greens, so I was like, you know what? I ain't got time to be mad. Better not fool with no collard greens today from, from the restaurant. Mmm. That's kind of good. I did sprinkle some garlic powder across the top. So that helped it out. And I see a little grease in there. So that's that, that's good. <laughs> Maybe that's butter or something. Okay, the mac and cheese is good. I'm taste it. Can you see the spoon? So you got a little grease to it. That's how you know it's at least they tried. <laughs> You know what? I'm not really a bread person either. I'm just not. I did want a piece of bread. And he sold me on the two pieces. It was like, we got a special. If you get two pieces, it's buy. It's get two for one dollar. Two for a dollar. <laughs> two pieces of bread for a dollar now. I don't know how I thought that sounded like a deal. Because I can get a whole loaf of bread for a dollar. I'm just saying. The store brand, Kroger brand. Yeah, I know I'll be shopping at Kroger. Whole loaf of bread for a dollar.
I don't know why I always sit down without napkins. Hang on. Look at this macaroni and cheese was good. Okay, good job, y'all. Now we got me scraping the bowl. That was good. And that's good. Now you knew what that was. I had the nerve to get a lot of potato salad too. Hmm. Knowing that was gonna be a hit or miss. Okay, let's wake up. Let's wake up and talk about it. Just to catch us up from the last time, I'll give you a quick, 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 quick overview. We're talking about things that are eternal versus things that are temporary. Things that are temporary can be burned, can be destroyed. It doesn't have as much valuable value as things that are eternal. Things that are eternal are things that you can't see, but you can feel the results of it. As opposed to things that are temporary are things that we always strive for every day. However, they do not hold any value because they cannot keep us happy. They cannot keep us at peace. It only gives us a temporary, temporary feeling of satisfaction or completion of, or success, happiness, or gives us a false sense of peace. However, love is something that we started 
to talk about. Well, there's other things that are eternal that eventually we'll get to. But love is something I want to touch on because it's something that everybody wants, everybody needs. And there's so many songs about it, but <clears throat> somewhere along the lines, we missed the mark. And so, while I said that a lot of times people fall into relationships, right? But it's not really love. It's actually something else. Well, now I wanted to go a little bit deeper in love because I don't know how many of you out there knew or knows there's actually different kinds of love. And I pulled a really good article just to share. I touched on this a little bit the last time when I talked about brotherly, brotherly love and godly love, which is agape. But there are four different types of love that I'm going to talk about today. Now, depending on the source you go to, they're going to say some says five, some says eight, some says seven different types of love. But of course you have people, psychi psychologists, psychiatrists and um, counselors who have written books and came up with their own little spin to it but let's just stick to the basis because this is where it this is where it kind of got its foundation from these greek words and i'm going to give you four different types of love and this is actually a transcript from an interview with uh, dr kurtley parker jones from the university of utah health so I'm not plagiarizing. I'm giving the source where I'm getting this. However, this is known material. She did not. She did not create or come up with these four different types of love. She's just speaking about it. But I'm using this source just to share. And she gave some really good examples. So very first type of love we're going to talk about is arrows. Um, I'm not going to go into a whole bunch of details of any of these. It's going to give you examples and share. So Eros is an erotic, passionate love. Okay. So Eros is erotically sexual or passionate love. It's often all about need and it's more about the person who's feeling sexually attracted, attractive. It's about the person who feels sexually attractive. Then it is about the person who is the focus of the love or thing that is the focus of that love. So it's not really about the focus on the other person. It's about you. It's about I'm feeling attractive. <laughs> so it's all about what I want. <laughs> um, it's addicting and it can cause great joy or great sorrow. It isn't always good for you. And more hearts are broken on Valentine's Day due to the unfulfillment of erotic love. So this is a quote unquote, quote unquote love that is not necessarily good for you. Now, it can be good for you if it's in, if it's in conjunction or combined with another type of love. But this is the type of love that cannot stand on its own. Eros is basically lust. It's a lustful type of love. It can become lustful, if you will, or um, it can become perverted. <laughs> Bless me. So, Eros cannot stand on its own and this is why you see so many relationships fall apart when they are based on arrows because it's based on a passionate, erotic, sexual type of love. But it can't, you can't, it can't, there's nothing else to stand on. It's all about really um, feelings. And this even says, and I even said this the last, in the last session, that. It's all about need. And I also said in the last video that I said true love. It's what I'm calling true love. We'll get there. Needs nothing in return. 
Uh, it's an unconditional love. We'll get there. Getting there. Eros is not unconditional. Let's go to the next one. Philia is the love of friends and equals. So this is brotherly love that I brought out. This is the love your neighbor as yourself can be. Um, so it can be love between lovers when they've been together for a long time and not so hot and bothered. Basically, you're not so, your, your pants are not on fire. You can go somewhere and sit down if you need to and still be in love with that person. You don't have to be riding their laps and all of that, you know. It's also called brotherly love. Uh, this is the love that is good for your health. The touch of a loved one, uh, it lowers blood pressure. People in loving relationships feel your love have few, wait, feel your love. People in loving relationships feel your love. Now, I remember speaking in the last video that it's like your parents or your grandparents, You, if you can know, if you know how it makes you feel to be loved by that person, it's someone that you really truly hold dear to you, a grandparent, your parent. And even when they pass away, you can still remember how they made you feel. Just because that person has died doesn't make that love go away. It, it can last forever. It's endure, It's more enduring. Okay? Um, as opposed to something that is temporal, temporal, anything that you can physically touch, right? can be burned, can be flooded, um, can, can be stored. Thief in the neighborhood, they can't take this love away, right? So it's not temporal. No one can steal that love from your heart that you have from your parent that has passed away or from um, your sister or brother. So the next type of love is storgy. It's also pronounced storge. This kind of love is what mothers know best because it isn't, um, it, said, it says that it isn't talked about much, but so it is a love of a parent for children and it's described as a most natural love. And this is because when mothers, it's the time that mothers spend with their children when they're in their bellies. Mothers spend time bonding with their children. And I spoke about this in the last video as well of how true love, true love, real love, enduring love, eternal types of love, how they stand the test of time. Basically, and this is the type of love storage where mothers have natural time to spend with their babies. I mean, it's a bonding period. So, it's not something that's temporal, something, just a fling that's fast in a hurry. You get the point. Don't have to repeat, don't have to repeat myself there. Um, this video is about to stop, but I'm going to keep on going. And women, not women. Okay. And the final, the fourth one is agape, which I touched on. It's a godly love. Says the love modeled on the love of the Christian God for men and the love of men for God. It is a love that is given whether or not it is returned. It is a love without any self benefit. This kind of love is important to the process of forgiveness. Now let's talk about that. I said before, doesn't need anything in return. And a lot of us can't, I say a lot of us, I don't want to even go there, but many people never make it to this type of love because of our own feelings and our own needs. Things have come, have become, especially if you're a selfish person, then you are not going to make it. And so what I'm saying when I, when I address real love, this is a perfected love, a love that is, has reached a perfection because it needs nothing in return and it goes beyond Anything that anybody can do or anything that anybody can say, right? It's enduring. It's patient. Um, it says that this type of love is important for the process of forgiveness. Forgiveness is important to your health because of 
The inability to forgive is associated with anger and a number of health outcomes that are very not very good. So it is love. I'm not talking about any specific type of love, but agape. It is love. We don't even have to name any other type of love. It is true love. I'm going to say that. I love to say true, real love that sets a very high bar. She said a hard bar. High bar, hard bar. But it may be at the foundation for happiness. There's no may about it. It's the foundation for happiness and contentment. This is where your real peace and where your real joy comes from. Um, and it, it says, this is the kind of love that's important to the process of forgiveness. So when people can't forgive, it's because I feel like I have a leg up. I am, I am, people really try to, try to hold other people hostage sometimes that really just keeps you keep stress and anxiety and it really creates bad energy in your and in, in you and that's why there's a lot of health conditions when it, stress causes a lot of other health conditions and unforgiveness it keeps it's like a cancer unforgiveness is like a cancer that bottles up inside of you and when you can't let that go Think about every time you think about something that makes you mad, something that you haven't forgiven someone from, it makes you just, it, there's this intense energy inside of you. That's not good. That's not good energy. It's negative energy. And so not being able to forgive keeps that energy in you. And it, it does more harm to the person who cannot forgive than it does to the person who, um, you know, needs forgiveness. But a lot of times people... Just go on by their business. But you're the one over there hurting and, and can't forgive. And you think that it is, um, you think you are winning because you can't forgive. But being able to love that person beyond, and this is a, through sickness and health, through death do you part type deal. You know, that's, that's where that vow come in from marriage. Being able to forgive. And so... I can never forgive you for what you've done to me. And people would say, well, what about this? What if about that? What if they cheated on you? What if they stole your money? Um, there's one thing about forgiveness. Forgiveness doesn't make you a fool. Just because if somebody stole my money, I can forgive them. But if I know they're a thief and has not have not been changed, I'm not going to leave my wallet around them. So... Just because I forgive doesn't mean that I'm foolish. It just means that I understand that just because just because you are human, you are capable of making errors. You are capable of making mistakes. You would like to be forgiven because you make mistakes. I make mistakes. We always like to say, I'm only human. I'm not perfect. So if we think about that for ourselves and we know that we mess up and we know that we would like to be forgiven when we mess up, why is it or that it's harder to forgive someone else when they mess up? It's like it's a double standard and we love to say, don't judge me. You can't judge me. Only God can judge me. But at the same time, we are, we are not willing to forgive someone else, even though we're expecting people to forgive us when we mess up. So that's what forgiveness is all about. It really, and especially in the Christian faith, of course, we if we're asking God to forgive us, um, how do we see him being able to forgive us, but we can't do it for each other? So that's why... Agape love is the highest form of love. It's a form of love that we should all be striving for. We should all be reaching toward. And I mentioned in the last video how plants grow. It starts as a seed and it grows and grows and grows and nurtures and gets nurtured into full ripeness, if you will. Full maturation. 
this is full maturation is agape love. And that's what I mean by standing a test of time. It takes time to get to know people. And when you take time to get to know people in general, you know that we are imperf imperfect people. So it's a little bit easier to forgive people when we see that this is a soul as well, especially having self-awareness. That's that word that comes back. We've talked about self-awareness quite a bit too. To have a self-awareness to realize some people don't even, that some people are ignorant to a lot of things. Some people are not self-aware. Some people are not awake. They're, they're just living. But if you're self-aware, then you can, you know, okay, they don't even realize what they're doing right now. It's just like, a drunk person, right? A person who is drunk. And you know that when some certain people get drunk, they don't even realize what they're doing. So it doesn't make what they're doing right if they're doing something that's wrong. But you know that they're under the influence, which is causing that. Same thing is with a person who you can, you can recognize that are not self-aware of their actions. So you, it's like taking the higher road to see, okay, this person don't even realize it. And I know they're human just like I am. You can forgive and just, you can still keep your distance, but forgiving releases that negative energy that you have inside of you and it allows you to move on with your life and start a healing in yourself. And it can actually, of course, if you can forgive enough to have a conversation to build a relationship with the person. You know, I can't say that every relationship and every situation, you're going to be best buddies again. That just may not happen. And that's just realistic. But I'm going to stop there for uh, this conversation about love. I've accomplished what I wanted to accomplish today by sharing the different types of love. All love is what we call love is not necessarily healthy love if it cannot stand alone. Because we can have all inordinate affections with things. I can have a love for myself that is not healthy. That becomes pride. That becomes what? Um, arrogance, pride and arrogance. An unhealthy love for myself or an unhealthy thing for an object. To fall in love with an object so much that it controls your life. That is not a healthy love. As a matter of fact, it's, it's actually an idol. We haven't gotten there yet. There's more to come talking about idols. In today's society, we have a lot of idols. People worshiping other people. Even people who do not believe in God has made other people their gods because they're worshiping Beyonce and whoever, whoever, whoever. I just threw that name out there, but it could be anybody. The American idol. People are wanting to have an idol, someone to look up to, but it can become very unhealthy if we begin to love that person more than we love God for sure. That's all for now. I'm going to continue eating. Until next time. Maybe I should save this for later. Bye for now.